This is the plaintiff, Richard Slack. He says he was sitting in his house watching TV when all of a sudden there was a huge boom. His neighbor's tree crashed down and landed on his shed and deck. The tree removal cost him $2,250. His neighbors are ignoring his requests for payment. He's outraged by his neighbor's behavior. So he's suing for the money he's now owed. These are the defendants, Chris and Julie. Chris says a tree limb from his tree came down and landed on the plaintiff's shed, and luckily there was no damage, and no one got hurt. Next thing he knows, his neighbor's trying to get him to pay 2250 bucks for the removal of the branch. $2,250 to remove one branch? Outrageous! He refuses to be ripped off, and this was an act of God because the tree was healthy. They're accused of not being too neighborly. All parties, please hear the radio. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says the defendant's tree crashed onto his property and destroyed his shed and his deck. But the defendant says a limb came down but did no damage. It's the case of welcome to the Small Claims Court branch. Thank you, Douglas. Okay, Mr. Slack, you're suing your neighbors, Chris and Julie for $2,250 that you say you are out as a result of a tree on their property that came down onto your property. Tell me what happened. On July 12, 2019, um, we were sitting watching television. We heard the house shook. and uh, That must have been scary. <laughs> it was. So we ran outside to see what happened. We saw the tree was uh, across the, the deck and across the shed. Okay. Now, this is a tree that's on their property? Yes. Okay. And had you ever thought that tree was going to be a problem before? Yes, I did. I spoke what to them. What made you think it was going to be a problem? Well, for years I've been picking up the bark the, and there's no, it hasn't been any buds on the tree. There's Massachusetts. No, the bark? Okay. <laughs> okay so. Go ahead. And um, when they first moved into the property, uh, as a neighbor, I went over and introduced myself and talked to them. And I said, we had two problems on the property. And one problem with major problem was this tree. And I said, and one, it was a tree that had five huge trunks. And I said, and one is pointing to my house and one is pointing to the other neighbors. Okay, were there leaves on the tree at that? No. How yeah. long have there not been leaves on the tree? A couple of years. It was neglect. I mean, you knew it was going to happen. Yeah, let me ask you about that. How long had that tree not had leaves? Well, we don't see it very often, um, but I do know. <laughs> okay, you got to kind of see it, though. <laughs> we, um, we moved in May of 2016. Yeah, and you've been there so quite a few years. There was no, uh, when we moved in, it was winter, so that, of course there was no leaves. But uh, that summer, there were leaves on the tree, so it was not until spring of 2017 that we noticed that there was no Then no that's two leaves. years that you've yes. had to... Yes. Uh, um, in that time that we were there, we have two neighbors, like he was saying, that their, the tree seems that it hangs over three houses, basically. It's an odd neighborhood. And um, neither of the neighbors ever mentioned it. That. We've never heard... Anybody mentioned the tree? I'm sorry, how tall is this tree? It was fairly tall. It was taller than the house. Yeah, it's like three stories high. Do you have pictures of the tree? Yes. Them into us. Thanks. Is this the tree? It yeah, is. But that's part of the tree. That's some, some of that remained. It had several trunks. Okay, that is a really tall tree that has literally not a single leaf on it. And I know that because I'm looking at the bushiness of the trees that are healthy all around it. This tree is really most sincerely dead. It is. Right, and a dead tree is a pretty unhealthy tree. It's a tree that's gotta come down. How do you guys not take that down? That was gonna fall on somebody's house. So we're a brand new homeowner. It's our first house together. Uh, our first house at all, and um, as you can You're imagine, not that new. you've owned it three years, and you yeah. had it. He says he, he said to you, "Hey, this tree." Has He's to, never said Nobody should have to say it. that to anybody. Oh, this is common the, sense. That's untrue. That that was said to okay, us. Okay, let's assume it wasn't. No, nope, that didn't need saying. Right. In other words, sometimes a tree limb falls, and the tree has leaves growing out of it, and then the neighbors are arguing. You should have known it was diseased, and your side says, "How am I going to know? Look at all the." But you don't have that going on. It is completely completely dead. And then this ends up, what, like half the tree ends up falling on your property? Only one branch. The no. entire I'm sorry. The entire tree fell. Send cell. over the one branch. Show it to her. <laughs> Show my, my dear lady what she calls one branch. So if a tree hangs over onto your property from your neighbor, can you cut that down to the property? I say yes. 
Uh, it's not your tree, so why do you say yes? Because you own the space above your plot. Fair enough. What do you say? Yeah, it's on your property line. Take that sucker down. So, you, But you can only take it down to the property line, right? Absolutely, within the premise of your property. Okay, going inside the courtroom. Is that the one branch you're referring to? That is the branch right here. This is still attached to the tree. Oh, you think the weight of it, maybe, is crushing his house? There was no damage as far as the tree removal. No damage to his house? You had to make a homeowner's claim on the damage to your house. How much damage was there to your house? Well, I, it was, I did it myself. I cleaned up the deck. I removed all the debris. So did so, they pay on your homeowners? No. No. So you didn't, and did you make a claim or you didn't? I made a claim and they told me that uh, wind damage is not covered. And I told my neighbor that. I said, it's not covered. I, I have it. Okay, but why are you asking for a deductible, insurance well, deductible, if there was no insurance in this case? After they, I sent them the pictures, they said, there is damage to the roof. You could see that the, all the, the, sh the shingles were destroyed. Some of them when it, when it first and when Can they you answer my question? Yes. You've amended your lawsuit today to add $750 yes, for an insurance deductible. Yes, because the materials. Deductible. I told them I would roof it myself to keep Who's the cost. them? My insurance company. So they gave me some monies to- How much money did your insurance company give you? That was my question. $700 towards the materials and the labor to have the roof done. So you didn't pay a $750 deductible, did you? They took that off, they took that off. And it, it's explained in their letters. Okay, let me see the letters from the insurance company. You're lucky somebody didn't get really hurt. And the worst part, when they took the tree down, they destroyed the yard with the trucks. Oh, wait, you mean when you hired a company to get the tree yeah. up? Okay. And ironically, the company you hired, you ended up hiring, right? Correct. So you each hired the same company. We did. Correct. Now, your comp now, do you have a receipt from them for what you paid them to remove the tree? I don't have the original receipt. You have to understand that you were in trial today. You need to have a receipt when you're in court. How are you going to prove to me what you paid? Do you have your canceled check? I just I thought about it. No, I don't. I, How did you pay? I paid by check. By check. So yes. if I give, do you know how to access your account on, online so that you can show me a picture of the check that you paid them? That'll do it. I don't know. I'm not, actually, I'm not online with the, I'm not that tech savvy. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, according to you, you paid them 1500 Right. And according to you, you paid the same company only 1800 to remove the whole tree. To remove two trees and to trim six more trees. Show me your property. proof of what you paid them. Absolutely. Since you paid by check, this isn't going to be a problem. You're just going to show, you're going to go to your bank and you're going to get a copy of the canceled check. I'll give you time to do that. Okay. And then, you know, whatever it is you paid them is what's at issue in this case. Okay. So I understand your concern. Why would this company charge him so much? But of course, if he shows a check to the company, then that concern is obliterated, right? They could charge you triple the, what they charge him, or they could charge him triple what they charge you. They could do whatever they want. This is America. Did you ever ask them, hey, why did you pay, charge that guy 1500 when you only charge us 1800 So I did. And what happened? And this is the awkward time. Um, so I asked the guy whom I believe is the owner when he came to do the estimate for the house for all the work. And I said, how come it's $1,500 for one branch? And he said, we helped him out. We increased the amount so he would hit his deductible and his insurance. Ah, interesting. So at that point, up till that point, we were thinking we would be good neighbors and offer to pay for some of, you know, everything that happened next door. And but just, then what? Then your just your sense of justice and propriety made you feel <laughs> that he should eat the damages from the tree that you didn't cut in all of those years that was quite dead because, hey, he did something wrong somewhere else to somebody else, so now I'm not going to pay him? We didn't want to be involved in fraud. You're not involved in fraud. This is your fault. Cut the tree. You, were supposed, you should have covered it. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to take that possibility into account because when that happens, you know what the check he shows me is going to be? Lower, okay. right? It won't be for 1500 because that'll be their side thing, right? Possibly. Right. What's that check going to show? 1500 Okay, good, because I'm like the police. If you make me run, it's worse. Okay? I, so don't make me chase a moving lie. target. I just want to know how much you paid. So you say it's 1500 I'm going to give you a couple weeks. That'll give you a chance sure. to find it? Okay. All right, so you just if you go to your bank, they'll give you a copy of it. All right, now I'm looking at the insurance papers and the insurance papers... Because I guess what they did was they valued your work at 750 Is that what they did? 
You, you always for the materials and stuff. You, you, well, the materials are seven twenty nine fifty six. They gave you a check for seven twenty nine fifty six, and they settled the matter with you at that. Yeah, the the roofing materials were one seventy one, and the labor allowance for two men in six hours was five fifty eight. That's how they came to the the amount of seven twenty nine fifty six. Well, then where's the deductible? They said they incorporated it. Well, what they show is that they didn't incorporate it. They show zero for a deductible. They didn't de reduce your recovery at all. They show zero here. So in well, other words, if the whole job is a $700 job and you got the whole thing from insurance, what should really happen is that they should recompense your insurance company the amount that your insurance company is out. Okay. That's what should happen because you can't collect twice. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to order you to recompense the plaintiff, the 729.56, which you've got to tell your insurance company about and see if they want that back. And then I'm also going to order you to pay whatever it is he can prove that he actually paid to the tree service. Okay. Okay? That's my verdict. And I'm going to give you two weeks to find the canceled check. Good luck, folks. Thank you. So the judge finds for the plaintiff, Chris and Julie, the defendants are on their way out of the courtroom. You're relatively new homeowners, but you've learned a, a hard lesson the hard way, I guess. What I do you think? I would say so. You didn't realize that you really well, would be obligated to pay. I had figured that the insurance fraud would factor into it a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. Well, you got to keep an eye on your trees. Better check the rest of mm -hmm. them now. Okay. Well, it's we got... all taken care of. The it moment that, that tree came down, we took care of the rest. Okay, very good. Well, you've learned a valuable lesson. Thank you very much. Thank you. All righty, thank you. All right, Mr. Slack. How are you? I'm just wondering. She said you're going to have to tell the insurance company if I give you that $700. Mm -hmm. will, you, will you tell them? Oh, yeah. I'm, I, I'm an honest person. You're an honest I, person? Yeah, and I, okay, good enough. And if you, you can get that check, you get, may get more money. Okay? Okay, thank you. Good luck to you. Thank All righty, thank you. Harvey? So the plaintiff presented a check for 1500 bucks and won the judgment. I want to say one other thing. Really important, if you're in a situation like this, do not cut beyond the property line. And if you need to enter the defendant's property, your neighbor's property, uh, to do whatever cutting you need to do, you have to get prior permission.